Well, hello. This is an update on Polkadot, which has not been an exception to the swoon that we've seen across the cryptocurrency space. While Polkadot has fared better than a lot of other cryptocurrencies, we've broken quite a few technical supports. In our last update, we had what I was calling the larger degree subwave one, followed by a nested one two setup. So this is something that's very sought after by Elioticians because it's usually a sign of a very bullish third wave to come. Well, as you probably know by now, we broke down through support. As a matter of fact, we've broken down below what I was calling our wave two support at about 2590. And therefore, this is no longer a one two. And therefore, our purple one two one two setup is invalidated. So this new alternate green pattern has taken over. And this is seeing this entire pattern as the subwave one. So this peak at about $55 is being seen as our larger subwave one, again, marked in green. I would like to note that I mentioned this in the last update, but this subwave one is so large that it looks suspiciously like an A, B, C correction up. And if that is the case, that would mean we're following the red pattern, which is marked with a B wave top. We'll look at that on the big picture in just a second. But this is something that we're seeing across all the cryptos in which most of our cryptocurrencies had a larger than standard subwave one, what I was calling a subwave one at the time, which is a bit ominous. In the near term, as I mentioned, our green pattern is the primary. I'm looking for this thing to turn around. We have an immediate support in the short term picture right at about 2561. So we, we don't want to break down below that. We're still not exactly out of the woods. If we do bounce, we need to see some impulsiveness. The red pattern does not become official. It doesn't become primary until we break the 1041 mark, which is the low that we had in the middle of the summer in July. So we don't want to see that happen. On the big picture, things look a little bit more clear. We can see that we are quite oversold with the MACD and it is curling back up. So that is usually a good sign that we're having a bottoming event. In this case, you can see again, the pattern looks much more convincingly, convincingly like a five wave impulse. So you can look at a, maybe there's a one, two here. Can't really see it on the daily chart. That's a three and a four. And then you have your fifth wave top. So it's more convincing. Again, the purple pattern will be removed from this chart during the next update. This green pattern is now primary. I would like to make a clarification. This green pattern is not the same green alternate pattern that I had on the chart last time. We had a normal pattern, like a primary purple, and we had a more super bullish green pattern. That's what I was calling it. This is not that pattern. So hopefully that doesn't get too confusing. This green is new pattern altogether, as I described on the two hour chart. With that clarification out of the way, we are in what I'm calling a wave two. And this looks cleaner on the logarithmic chart on this daily, daily chart in which we're not quite at the 61% retrace yet. We're right at the, about the 50% retrace. So that is fair range for wave two pullback. I've placed support right at about 1969. And that is actually the 61.8% retrace of this new larger subwave one. So if we, if we break that, it's not the end of the world. This is just a, a strong possibility that we hit this and bounce up common place for a wave two to come. We could go lower without invalidating, but as I mentioned, uh, we, we probably, we don't want to break too far below that. So again, 1969 is a support, not the end of the world if we break it, but it does drastically increase the probability that we are following the red pattern. And of course the red pattern, when we look at the big picture is that we never finished the correction that started after our May, 2021 peak. So the entire correction early in the summer would be considered an A wave. This whole thing would be seen as a B wave fake out rally as we saw on the short term chart. And we would have a nasty red C wave uh, underway to complete this entire correction. This is a common pattern to almost every cryptocurrency. Some of them are looking better than others. Let's not talk about Polygon because that's been just blowing the doors off. But this is seen in Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, I'm sorry, not Bitcoin Cash. That did fall the red pattern. Uh, Chainlink, uh, Dashcoin. There's a bunch of other cryptos that have the same ominous red pattern lurking. It's rearing its ugly head. Hopefully, you don't see it. That is about support. You're not. We're not really. We can't confidently make that the primary pattern until we break the 1034 mark, uh, give or take a few pennies, as I mentioned, because you're not out of the bullish, impulsive pattern until you literally, legitimately invalidate it. So we could, in theory, retrace the entire rally. With that being said, our targets do change overhead. Bad news again was that we lost our nested one, two, one, two setup. 
but there's a silver lining. The silver lining is that now we have a substantially higher subwave one to our pattern. So our subwave one again falls around $55 mark, something like that. And provided that we pull back or that we are complete with our pullback in wave two at about the 2331 mark, our subwave three is now targeting 235 to $348. Yeah, let that sink in for a second. That's a that's a pretty, pretty crazy extension, but I'm doing the math. If this really is a one-two, we've got quite some potential overhead. Getting in the lower end of that box will get us a five and a half plus X return at the bottom of this box. Expect a fourth wave consolidation. And then our final top for our subway five would fall somewhere between 445 and 660. The bottom of that box would give us an 11X return from where we are right now at minimum. So again, I'm going to state this again. It, it sounds crazy, but if this really is, assuming that this whole thing is a one, two, our targets are looking better now than they, than they would have been looking before. So right now we really need to fight the near-term battles. We need to hold this support. And I would like to note that the pre-existing Fibonacci confluences overhead still remain. So we have some strong resistance at 191, could bump our heads on that. There's one at 381. And then of course, 583, getting to 583 would give us nearly 15x return from where we are. And then there's a the bigger confluence up overhead, which is our 1.6 extension of the larger rally from 2020 into 2021. That falls around 1161. That would be a 28x return from here. So again, we're not out of the woods. I'm watching all these very carefully. So if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do so so you don't miss any warnings. If anything takes a turn for the worse, or if we have a big bullish rally coming our way. Right now, like I said, things are valid until they invalidate. So I'm bullish at this moment. But if we start breaking supports, might be time to uh, get your finger on that sell button, maybe take some tax losses for 2021, whatever works for you. So uh, don't forget to like the video. Until next time, thank you for watching and happy trading.